Hey everyone, Donovan Brown here. Welcome to the DevOps for ASP.NET Developer Series. Azure DevOps allows you to use as much or as little as you like. Thanks to the numerous integration options, you don't have to rip and replace what you have today to start using Azure DevOps. For example, if your code is already in GitHub, you can leave it there and start using just the features you need from Azure DevOps. Let's see how Abel and Jeremy integrate Azure DevOps and GitHub. Abel, we've talked about a bunch of different ways that we can share or store source code with Azure DevOps. Right. And in Azure DevOps, we have options to do distributed and non-distributed source control. Correct. But I think what intrigues me the most is the ability to plug into other source control repositories like GitHub. Mm -hmm. And GitHub is so important because so many open source projects are on GitHub. And I understand there's direct integrations between GitHub and Azure DevOps. Yeah, we really wanted to build a first class experience between GitHub and Azure DevOps so that there really is no type of gap, right? If you're using GitHub, it should make perfect sense that you want to use Azure DevOps as your DevOps tooling. Very cool. Yeah, so like I said, first class integration. And the way that we've done that is we've built integration between Azure boards, the way that we track our work with GitHub, and also we've integrated our pipelines, our build and release pipelines with GitHub as well. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what I mean. Awesome. All right, so on my screen right now, what you see is a sample of an Azure board, right? We've talked about this as well. Inside of Azure board, you have the ability to track any unit of work in your software project. Now in GitHub, there are issues, right, that right. you can track. Um, but that's not very powerful, right? If you're, if you're just tracking issues, that makes sense. But if you want to track from sprint to sprint, it's really nice now to be able to use the power and flexibility of Azure boards linked to GitHub. Right, so you basically can organize what does my work look like over an increment as opposed to I just have a huge list of things to do. Right, right, right. So to actually link your Azure boards to your GitHub repo is pretty simple. So from your projects, go to your project settings, and then now, does this ahead. assume that I've created an Azure DevOps board first? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you've already created your Azure DevOps project. You have your board, and from here you go into your project settings, and you'll go into underneath boards. There's a GitHub connections, and from here we'll go ahead and click on it. Let's connect to our GitHub account. Now I've already. Uh, authenticated, otherwise you'd have to type in your username and password and two-factor authentication and all that stuff. And now it's going to want you to connect up to your GitHub repo. Right? Okay. So here's a list of all of my repos. We'll go ahead and just grab one of them, my able tail in front end, that's good enough. We'll click on save. And literally that's all you need to do now. Now my Azure board is connected with that specific GitHub repo. Okay. So let me show you what I mean. Let's jump back to our boards. And let's go into our Kanban board. And for this demo, let me go ahead and move this over to the side. Let me go ahead and pull down my source code. So this is my Tailwind front end. Um, if we go ahead and make some changes, let's uh, add some changes, make some changes. <laughs> we can do a git status. Let's go ahead and add our changes. And let's do a commit. Commit minus M, uh, made change for demo, fixes AB pound 65. Now you might say, why did I just say fixes AB pound 65? Uh, I might say that. Why did you use <laughs> fixes AB pound because 65? Because for this demo, I'm saying that this particular check-in is going to go ahead and fix from Azure board work item number 65. Okay, so you're referencing from that commit yep. the board item. Yep. Got it. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And then we'll go ahead and push this back up to GitHub. Now the magic is where I say fixes AB pound, right? Because by doing that. I just saw it move. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> by doing that, it linked that check-in to this particular work item. So now any work that you do in GitHub, as long as you flag it with AB pound, whatever the number is, it's going to automatically link it to that particular work item, including using verbs like fixes, which takes it from an active to a resolved state. Now nice. if we jump into the work item itself, 
you'll be able to see the work that we did is now tracked underneath development. And this, of course, is a deep link back into GitHub. So if I jump in here, click on it, it takes me into GitHub, into the, work, uh, into the, the change set, and you can see exactly what changes were made. Nice. Right. So the integration goes both ways as well. So if you're in GitHub and you want to make a check-in, so let me go ahead and jump into GitHub. Let's say we update my README file for some reason. Uh, let's go ahead and update this really quickly. We'll make a change. And from here, we have to wait for my screen to refresh. And we'll add something. Now, if we come in here, check this out. If I say uh, fix for demo, maybe pound, or let's do a pound, just like that, all of a sudden, it's going to start showing us all of the work items that's already linked to our Azure boards. OK. Right. So now I can link my work items like this as well. How cool is that? So it nice. goes both ways. It's not just from Azure DevOps. It's from Azure DevOps and also from GitHub as well. So it's true two-way integration for Azure Boards for GitHub. Got it. Yeah. So that's the integration between Azure Boards and GitHub, using the power and flexibility of Azure Boards to track your works for your open source projects as well. Now, if I create a issue on the GitHub side, will that reflect on the Azure board as well? At this moment, it doesn't. It doesn't go that direction, but uh, I think that's in the plans. Okay, very cool. Yep. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you as well is this is great for tracking our work, right? But what about build and release pipelines? From GitHub, how easy is it for me to create a build and release pipeline? And the answer is it's actually super easy. Let me jump back to my repo again. And from my repo, what you need to do to create your CI CD pipelines and Azure pipelines is you have to install the GitHub Marketplace extension for Azure pipelines. And that's something you install at GitHub. At GitHub. So okay. from GitHub, right? Let's go to the Marketplace. And from GitHub's Marketplace, we'll go ahead and search for Azure pipelines. And here, we'll be able to see the extension that we need to install. Now, I've already installed this, so we'll just go ahead and jump in and configure it. But when you configure it, it's pretty simple. First, it's going to ask you for your password. Then it's going to ask you, which repo do you want to create your pipelines for? So if we go ahead and scroll down, we can say every single repo in my, in, in my GitHub account. Uh, which is insane. I don't quite want to right. do that. Right. I wouldn't want to do that with mine either. <laughs> so we'll just go ahead and you can select uh, which repository you want. Click on Save. And then it's going to now redirect you and take you back into Azure Pipelines where you have to log in. And after you log in, it's going to ask you which uh, subscription do you want to use, which project do you want to use. So we'll go ahead and do that. So while you're doing that, what's key for people who are running open source projects is we provide the pipeline service free. So if I have an open source .NET project on GitHub and I want to automate my build process, I can go in, take these steps, and at no extra cost to me, I've got automated builds. Yes, absolutely. Nice. Right. So even for your open source projects, you can have really complex, powerful CI CD pipelines as well. Right. So you select your subscription, but you go ahead and select your project. We'll go ahead and click on Continue. And now it takes me into my Azure DevOps subscription and we'll be able to see all the repositories. And from here, we can go ahead and say, you know what, for this, let's go ahead and create my, my build pipeline for me. So the first thing that it does is it goes and actually examines that repo, figures out what's in the repo based on the technologies, and suggests some type of install, or uh, some type of build, right, using a YAML build. So then we can go ahead and save this, and hooray for that, we're ready to go. Now you have your build and release pipeline all set. And it gives me the right template to kickstart based on the type of code. So if it's .NET Core, it's going to do .NET Core steps. If it's yep. Node, it'll do Node steps. And just like before, right? most likely, you're going to have to go in, you're going to have to tweak the build, tweak the release a little bit to make it do exactly what you want it to do. But it's going to take you 90% of the way there. Nice. And I noticed this is stored in a YAML file. Yes. So I'm assuming that means if I have a custom build process that I do for most of my projects, I would be able to easily take this and paste it into a new project to reuse it. Yeah, I, I really love YAML builds precisely for that reason, right? So a YAML build is you have your build definition, but you describe it 
you describe your build definition using a YAML file. And that same YAML file is checked into your source code repo right alongside your code. So now your build definition is versioned right alongside your code, which makes it super powerful because if somebody forks your repo, like you were saying, or maybe clones your repo, not only do they get your source code, they, they're going to get your They inherit build. your build, yes. which is nice. Which is really, really nice. And, and not only do they inherit your build at the, that moment, it's the build for that version, right? So even if your build definition changes as time goes on, it's versioned right alongside your code. So as long as you do a get from your repo, your build definition, and your source code, that's always going to be in sync. That's great. So whether I'm an enterprise that's using GitHub to store my source code or I'm open source project maintainer, either way, this is an easy way to track both issues, source control, and automate my builds. All right, so there you go, right? Super powerful integration between GitHub and Azure DevOps. So like I said before, what we want to make sure is even if you're using GitHub for your open source projects or your social projects, we want to give you first-class DevOps tools by using Azure DevOps. That's awesome. And speaking of Azure DevOps, this has been a, a multi-part series. We've sat here and gone through all phases of Azure DevOps. And I just want to say for .NET developers, a Abel said it before, there's no excuse not to have continuous integration, continuous deployment. All of the tools are available, straightforward and easy. And we hope that this series has not only introduced you to what's available and what you're capable of doing, but also has made it easy to, regardless of whether you're looking at source control, automated builds, testing, unit testing, we had release pipelines, all of that's there. Feel free to dig deep and explore, and just happy to have shared this tool set with you.